Welcome to the Fusion Podcast. My name is Brent Colby. And I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. Today, we are talking about volunteers. That's right, but you don't have to shout, Brent. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a video. Today, our episode is also not sponsored by... Oh, sorry, you're gonna be the first not sponsored by. Yeah, it's not sponsored by Starbucks. So if you see any Starbucks cups anywhere in this video, it is actually not a Starbucks cup. But I'm really excited about our second not sponsor. Our second. And you, you kind of jumped into it a little bit. So tell oh, us I'm who our second sponsor is. I just can't wait. Is. Our second not sponsor is, of course, the Left Behind series. That's right. Featuring Nicolas Cage. Because we know that if you're a Christian, you've seen the Kirk Cameron version already. Ready to get going? Yeah, I'm ready. Thanks, Nick. It's time for a little bit we like to call something awesome. I found out something awesome today looking online. It appears that Domino is trialing an oh. autonomous pizza delivery robot Sounds on the scary. island nation of New Zealand. Oh, where they don't wear shoes. They don't wear, <laughs> do they not wear shoes? They don't. New... <laughs> the Kiwis don't wear shoes. Okay. That's what they like to be called as Kiwis. Actually. Okay, good, good, good. So I don't know if you can see, uh, there's a video that illustrates how the robot actually works hmm, and then prototype. Apparently it's based off of like a military Looks model. Like Wally. It does look a little bit like Wally. -E, um, and uh, it'll bring pizza right to your doorstep hmm. sometime uh, this year, yeah. apparently. Don't worry about Skynet or anything. It's not a big deal. Robots <laughs> taking over the world. <laughs> Killed by pizza. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. That's something awesome. Uh, good for New Zealand. I don't know how that helps us here, but you know what? Let's keep going. Yeah. So volunteers, Stephen, uh, you're a children's pastor at that's church right. in the Northwest, Church on the Ridge. Church on the Ridge. How long have you been at the church there? Uh, I have been on staff for three years. So three years. That means by now you have everything figured out about volunteers. Totally figured right? out. Yeah. Yep. Good. Totally figured out. <laughs> I've got I've got all the answers to all your questions. So what do you do? How do you get volunteers? When you get them, what do you do with them? And I think the real question here, Brent, is what do you do? Well, being the the coordinator, the director, the man, the man upstairs. Literally, your <laughs> office is upstairs. Yeah, what do yours, you do? Uh, you know, I try a lot of stuff that worked with volunteers. Sorry, can you speak into the microphone? Sorry, a lot of Thank things you. that definitely uh, didn't work with volunteers. That, that one, that's not the real microphone. Where's the... It's above us. Oh. And uh, one thing I figured hey. out <laughs> was this. With volunteers, you're always, you're always recruiting, you're always training, and you're always motivating. Yes. I think one of the first mistakes I always made was that I did a recruitment campaign for like a week during the year. Yeah, and then that was a mistake. For 51 weeks, I complained about not having enough volunteers. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I just can't wait till that next recruitment campaign. That'll solve all my problems. Yeah. And then I, I doubled my efforts. I had two, in, like one in the fall and then one in the, the winter, spring, you know, transition. That oh. still didn't do it. So I think for me, the first... You think that kind of like vol recruiting volunteers is a year-round thing, huh? <laughs> it is. Yeah. So weird. recruit year-round and training in the same way. You don't have like one training event a year. And motivating, right? When you encourage, you kind of get them going. Yeah. You gotta. It's kind of a constant gig. You don't ever stop doing those. Yeah, things. I think the fastest way if you want to lose volunteers is to uh, stop um, like interacting with them. Don't motivate them. Kind of just give them the training materials and, and never follow up with them. I think that's a really easy way where you can lose people. Yeah. I think another way to, I mean, even before you lose them, to not get them in your recruitment, if you're really recruiting for jobs, for tasks, I think you're really missing out on that bigger purpose of why. It's the warm body scenario. You're just trying to get people in there because you're just trying to keep your head above water. And Wait. at some point, you're going to drown. And that's so tempting, right? Because yeah. you can't do it without people. You so can't. just find somebody. You can't. And you just throw them in there and, and you hope for the best. But no, if you really want to like grow your ministry, you need people there. And you need people who are on board with the vision. People right. who respond to vision, not to need. Yeah. So I would say that. Recruit with. Recruit with why. Yeah. Why are you here? Lead that with your recruitment. It's good. Training, that's when you get to the what. That's when the nuts and bolts come out. Here's how we build it. Here's exactly what we're doing. And the motivating part is about who. Who are you identifying? Who are you thanking uh, for being a part of your team? Yeah. So Identify the win. Yeah. Recruit. Let them know that they're doing a good job. If yeah. you know what they're supposed to be doing so that they do a good job, let them know how they can be doing a good job, and they'll buy in a whole lot more than I think if they're just kind of there to make sure kids don't die. Right. Which is also important. I mean, we don't want to yes. overlook that fact. No. You know, not dying kids is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, so how do you thank your volunteers? I mean, I know you guys have large teams at your church. What do you do to keep yeah. them uh, feeling honored? We try we try to identify um, different volunteers at different points and kind of let the whole team know. But I also, uh, 
I call a volunteer a day. I start alphabetically and I just go down the list. Really? And, yep, and I get through all my volunteers about once a quarter. So every quarter, I do every volunteer gets four phone calls from me a year saying thank you just for being there and doing what they're doing and, and being a part of that. That's how I let them know that I know that they exist, one, because it's really easy to right. uh, kind of not see people, to get the kind of the, the, the stuff of the ministry, the whirlwind, right? right? But people know, hey, they care, they know I'm here, and they appreciate what I'm doing. That's a big deal. That's a big deal with people. One phone call, once a quarter, and you know, and people appreciate and that. Thank them for not letting the children die. Yeah, yeah, not dying children During is a big deal. During that last quarter, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh, anything else you guys do? Because I know that you guys have, you guys don't just do like a thank you day for your volunteers. You put a greater emphasis on it than that, don't you? Yeah, no, we, we, we took the entire month of February and we did Volunteer Appreciation Month. Well, I don't know if that's actually a Volunteer Appreciation Month anywhere in the world, but we said, hey, you know what? February is a good month. There's an extra day in there this year, so we're going to... There's gonna, an extra gonna, day. Yeah, so there's a whole other day to appreciate volunteers, right? <laughs> so we we did that, and uh, it was really cool. We had kids write on these big posters and stuff. And really, I mean, really simple things, just to let them know that, one, you know who they are, right? you appreciate what they're doing, and that they're doing a good job. That's awesome. That's yeah, it. yeah, it's really simple. If you guys have any thoughts or, or ideas that you've done to Let Brent know. thank them, yeah, uh, to recruit them, to to train them, we'd love to see that in the comments below. We're uh, very interested to hear what you guys are doing with the volunteers in your ministries as well. Yeah, yeah, let's work together. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Well, and that brings us to questions without answers. Stephen, we've identified a few questions that have no answers in children's ministries. A few. We, we wanted to share some of those with uh, you at home. This is my big question for the day. Okay. Uh, if a baby cries in the nursery yeah. and there's no volunteers there to hear it, do you actually need volunteers? That's good, that's a good question. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't have an answer. There's, there's no, no answer. answer. That's the whole point of the thing. There is no answer. Here's my question, number two. Is family ministry really any different than children's ministry besides being called the director or a pastor right is it different? i don't know 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 question number three if rick warren was still alive today would he approve <laughs> Steve, of rick warren is still alive he is still alive today this is awkward <laughs> um well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in to Fusion Podcast. We will see you soon. And again, if you like what you've seen, feel free to subscribe. The button and, is somewhere below us. And we'll talk to you again It's red. Then. Later? Later. Probably? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks for making that weird as we end.